Hey, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Just coming on with a video. I'm going to title this one of my 100 things challenge because I need to get back to that. And I was experimenting yesterday. I'm going to do this video in a bit of a reverse. You can see I've got some beautiful drop paper here. And excuse my wrap on my wrist. I aggravated it last night. Hmm, too much crafting. So it has to sit in this thing for a few days to settle. Um, so yes, uh, yesterday I did some, not the sooner yesterday, um, I did some crafting and I did a process video and there's a siren I apologize um, I did a process video which I'll tack on to the end of this and I'll just do a show and tell because after the process video finished it's a talk through so it's 45 minutes long a um, bit of a different video I had some spare time yesterday and it was 40 odd degrees so I decided to sit down and do some crafting so after the video stopped I did a lot more designs but it's the same concept um, of the ones and this is the result of what I finished with as well I'll turn this over in a minute so it's not distracting and I'll zoom in a little so I've got some beautiful drop paper here this is all done with watercolors and stamps so just stamping off what I was doing this is actually a piece of um, paper from our supermarket and I explained that in the video where in Australia we can go to what we call the deli within the supermarket and they have all bulk stuff and you can ask for like sliced meat and you can ask for two slices and it's like 50 cents they all white, they're all weighed by kilo and they put the meat into a plastic bag and then they wrap it in this paper and this paper doesn't touch the meat so I've been saving it's nice and thin it's almost like newsprint so it's nice and thin for collage so what I was working on yesterday was stickers so these sticker sheets these round ones I got from an op shop um, these ones I bought from a cheapy shop so they're all just white stickers and I was just slapping some really um, cheapish, well these ones weren't cheapish, but cheapish watercolours on them. So I used these ones as well. Uh, so I used some of my PBO paints. I used some of these ones later on, not in the video. Um, and I used some of these really, really cheap ones, which were Royal Lancaster, which are horrid. But... They're really chalky like these ones. They have quite a chalky finish and they're in this hard cake. But I love some of the colours in this. And one's missing because I tried to um, put it in water to dilute it to see if I could make a watercolour spray. Did not work. Don't go and do that. <coughs> Excuse me. But these, I used some of the stickers. Um, I think particularly this one. They're a little chalky but it's nothing's rubbing off. And they worked really well. So... They're very similar to the, these were the Mikador ones I picked up at the, at Spotlight. So I'll use up those. I just like the colours. <coughs> so these are the round stickers. So basically you'll see the process video later. You slap the watercolour on, let it dry and then stamp with a waterproof ink. I have experimented with um, stamping first and then watercolouring but it does dull down the colour. So I've shown you some of the stamps I used in the process video. And these are just from my stash. Some of them are really, really old, so you probably can't buy them again. If you're interested in any particular stamp, let me know and I can tell you where it's come. So I've done some butterflies. I've done some overall patterns. They're easy to use in my journal, to use in my art journal, to use in my... I might put some in my planner. Um, just wanted to have a play. It was really hot yesterday and it's again going to be the same hotness today. So I did those ones. And then I did some circle ones. This was half a sheet that was in um, the package. So I did those ones. This is a silhouette stamp. That was from Lincraft years and years ago. So as you can see, um, they're all stamped differently because I had to stamp off so I didn't interfere with the next stamp. And some of them are cut up because of that reason. So these were some, decided to do some birds with dream. This is the only sheet that I splattered. So this is the other half of that. This is the other half of that sheet. So some of the sheets I did have to cut apart to stamp on because um, I didn't want the stamp to then overlay another sticker and be a half one. So a lot of these ones I was concentrating on full sticker sheets. So we've got Dream and a little Birdie. Birdie on a line. I like these. Um, this is a Kayser Craft stamp. That's up, upside down, this one here. So the, I stamped over two stickers. So you just got a number on this one. you got some lines. I love the girls. The girls are awesome. These are, sorry, but there. These girl stamps are from that place we don't mention anymore. If you don't know about the place we don't mention anymore, <laughs> just message me or leave me a comment and I'll message you back. Um, it's quite funny. So I did quite a few, <coughs> excuse me, 
a silly voice. Um, so I just love these girl ones. I could go and colour them in further, but I think I'm just going to use them the same. So I did, I think I've got about six different girls. So I did some circle girls as well. As you can see here, a couple of them are stamped off the sticker. So this particular, these stickers didn't have any what I call sticker waste. So this bit's missing. So they've peeled the, the waste bit off. Which a bit sad about because I can use that as well. But that's okay. Um, so I love the little, <coughs> the little girls. So whether you just do the heads or whether you do the long bodies. Oh, there's some more long bodies. I like that one. That one fit really nicely on that size label. There's some more heads. I had to cut a lot of the heads out or stamp them upside down like this because I didn't want to interrupt with the next sticker. Oh, these are some more. This particular stamp is from a, I'll show that one in the video, a free magazine set. Or you pay for the stamps, but it comes with a magazine from many years ago. This one, I love these ones. This is just the right size stamp. This is another one from that place we don't mention anymore. Just love the, should I take these away because it might be easier to look at them. Um, without other stamps behind it but I just love the look of these ones there's that yawning again I do have an excuse today I am quite tired today it was still 30 degrees at midnight last night and I ended up camping on the couch for a few hours which is not real comfortable I can't believe I actually slept on the couch for six months a while back um, but I couldn't get comfortable so I lied in bed and watched a whole lot of YouTube videos which I shouldn't because I was watching a few of the sneak peeks from Creativation the big when all companies release what they're going to do for the year and yeah well now I want to buy stuff bad idea so I did some clouds I really like the clouds I could write I could write things in the clouds or I could um, stamp more things in the clouds but the clouds just fit I think the stamps that fit really nicely are going to go very well so then I did some more faces um, these are big long stickers so this is all one big long sticker is it um, bought these are Avery stickers bought from our office supply store really cheap they're traditionally supposed to go down the spine of a binder so I did have to cut these ones up to stamp on them um, I'm missing oh no that's that one so I did do those ones so I can just fussy cut these out I could draw a body on them I could do so that those that one again is from the place we don't mention. This one's again from a magazine set. So as you can see, even looking at this one, the pink to the orange look really really cool. What else did I do? I did some round frames. I think that's off the same set as that girl. This is the round stamps are off a really old old set. I don't even know where I got. Um, so I tried to do some blue and green ones as well. Um, and there's some more little people. I had to cut these ones apart. So these are about the size of the stickers. Um, I think that's all of them are six. So they basically just peel off. So the ink is waterproof, but the watercolour is not. So we'll have to see how they go in my journal. But I usually do a coat of... Um, matte gel medium over the top of them anyway just to make sure they stick down so again this one's off a um, set from that come with the magazine I don't buy a lot of the magazines now so I tried some with words this is a script stamp from a while ago could be a case of craft one with the font on it so these ones are the same size as these ones but I can easily cut them down if I wanted to Leave you my... Seriously, yawning. Do have a good excuse today. So then I decided to do some overall pattern ones. So you can see that's... If I can bend it. That's how the stamp's going to pull off. So I deliberately stamped over the edge and onto the next stamp with these ones just to try that out. Not sure how that's going to look in the journal um, when sort of half, this, half the things are missing. They actually don't look that bad. You don't necessarily need to do these with sticker paper. You could do them with just regular paper. Um, and then you just need a glue stick to stick them down on. So these are my tiny small stickers. I only did one sheet of these. I want to go back and do some more of these. So this is the first one I tried. This is a wood grade stab. And I just love the effect of these. These are just going to be awesome. These might go in my planner more than anything. Just to highlight things. 
And then I played around with these. I did some word ones as well. You can see the bit of ink between the stickers because I just stamped all over the top of. I did some flower ones. I love these flower ones. These are just gorgeous. Where most of it's blacked out and just the flower showing through. And I did some butterflies as well. So I will lead into the process video now. And I will call this one of my 100 things challenge. I don't even know what number I'm up to. So I'll pop that in the title. I don't even think I'm up to 10. That's disgusting. I started it last year and I just haven't haven't got around to it yet. Oh, life. And seriously, when it's 42 degrees here, why would I want to um, sit down and craft sometimes? <laughs> Got other things to do. So I'm loving some of these. So some of these will be Shan. Sh Shan. I can't talk today. Lack of sleep. Shan in Happy Mail. I'll use some of them. I'm sure my daughter will steal some of the girls because she does that. But that's what I want to show you and I'll lead, lead you into the process video. I'll say welcome again because I didn't realise I was going to swap this video around and put it at the front. Bye for now. Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. So I thought I'd come on today and play. Um, here in Australia it is, and I can show you on my phone. Let me make it bigger. It is that hot. If you can't see it it's 40 degrees it's supposed to hit 43 and it's about 2 30 in the afternoon so it probably will hit about 43 so where do I hide I hide in my lounge room sitting under the aircon at my art desk so I thought I'd do a different video today I thought I'd do a chatty one sorry I've got my bottle of water here as well so I thought I'd do a chatty one Alexis is not here most of the time I film videos either late at night and I have the TV going. There's really nothing on TV. Otherwise you'd be. <laughs> Wouldn't get me live. Oh, not live, but real time. So I thought I'd do something different. I thought I would do some real time or a real time video. See if you like this style. Welcome to all my new subbies that have come on board um, in the last few weeks. We appreciate you stopping by. Let us know if you like this style of video. I know it's not for everyone because of time restraints. Let me know if you like sped up process videos with a voiceover. Um, let me know what sort of videos you like. Um, a few of my uh, favourite YouTubers do these long ones. Um, and I usually pop them in the background when I'm crafting. And then it sort of seems like you're crafting with someone in your house. Um, but if I put them on in the background, you won't hear me. So I get to sit here and talk to myself. Sorry if you hear a bit of traffic, I do have the door open which is quite near me to let a bit of air flow through um, and I'm sorry if you can hear the air conditioner buzzing um, every so often. So what are we going to do today? I thought we'd do a nice quick project and we're going to use some of these stamps. I picked out all my people stamps. So I've got lots of different people. I mainly want their heads. I like this one. Um, these two are from that place we don't mention anymore. Let me know if you don't know about that place we don't mention anymore and I will... Um, let you know. I'll send you a message. This one, I don't even know where I got this one from. Um, oh, Lincraft, ages ago. So I like this solid head here. I may use the crown as well. <coughs> I've used the ticket before. I think that's the only thing I've used before on this layout. The star's quite cute. I might even use the diamond. I love this set. This set was um, a few years ago. It was free. Oh, it would have been five years ago. Free with a magazine. Worth 20 pounds. Not sure whether the whole stamp set's £20, but it's usually about $20 for a magazine and an A4 size stamp sheet. I used to buy them every month, but I sort of, I've got a lot now and, <coughs> excuse me, drink of water. And unless they spark a lot of joy when I look at them or they're not similar to what I've got, I don't buy them. Um, haven't bought a magazine with stuff on it for probably two years. So I like this girl. I like using that girl. I like this girl. She's a bit hard to see because she's black. Um, so again, that was from a free magazine. I like this one as well. It was from a free magazine. I don't see a lot. Oh, I was free with a magazine. I don't see a lot of this particular one called Creative Stamping. It's an England one. So it was around $20. But a lot of the Australian ones don't put out things this big. So this one I like particularly for the head. I think it may be too big for this. what I'm doing. I may use the cupcake. I may use the flowers. They may work. Um, I'm not sure. I may use just say hi and do some labels um, for Happy Mail. After I've gone through all those, so I just put all those out of my stamp box. I'm trying to get organised this year and put everything like with like. I'm 
sort of still unpacking. I'm still in a temporary house and I've been here 18 months. Um, so I didn't really want to unpack if I didn't, wasn't going to stay here. Looks like we might be staying here for a couple more years yet. It's a very small house. There's just no room. I need an art and craft room and there's just no room. The room I was going to use for my art and craft room, I've just, it's got storage stuff in it because there's nowhere to store other stuff. Ah, oh, joys. Um, so I've picked out some stickers. So I've got some round stickers. So these ones I picked up, they're a bit glossy. I'm not sure how the watercolours are going to go on them. Picked up these ones from an op shop for 50 cents for most of a pack a while ago. So I found those. This one is Avery Label stickers I picked up at Officeworks a little while ago. These are five folder ones, so they're quite big. Quite big, so you get four sheets to the, the page. And then you get this waste bit down the bottom. This one's got 18, like a dress size label stickers. These were $5 a pack. I only buy them when they're $5. They're not worth, I think these were worth $50. I bought these the other day. These are tiny stickers. Um, so they're about a centimetre in diameter or half an inch, under half an inch, just under half an inch. And these ones are a nice size too. So these ones are probably two centimetres by one, two, three, four, two by four centimetres or possibly just under an inch by an inch and a, nearly two inches. So these ones were $2.95 a pack. So let's take the packaging off there. I like to, well the idea of today, I haven't told you the idea of what I'm doing today, is to make some labels, uh, not label stickers, to make some stickers that I can put on my, in my journals and stuff. So they're, ooh, they're a bit shiny too. I wonder how they're going to take to the watercolour. These ones are nice and flat, but these ones are a bit shiny. We'll see how they go. And I like working on several sheets because, well, they'll dry almost instantly today because it's blooming 40 degrees blooming 40 degrees um, but I usually work on several sheets so I'm just working on some drop paper this is actually or when you go in Australia when you go I don't know about America I don't know whether you have the delis there when you go into the supermarket you have a deli and they sort of have all the meat in bulk and like sliced meat and sometimes they have like chicken pieces and all that sort of stuff and rotisserie chickens and cabana and cheese and you can go and ask for like three slices of ham or two slices of chicken loaf or whatever and they put it in a plastic bag at my local um, IGA which is a brand of supermarket here in Australia and they wrap it in this really cool paper it's almost like newsprint paper so your food doesn't actually touch this paper so it's quite safe to use because they put the food in a plastic bag they used to wrap it in tissue paper and the food used to soak through to this now they put the food in a plastic bag similar to the ones you put your fruit and veg in so the food never touches this paper so I've been saving it um, and using it for drop paper and then it's quite thin to collage with and I've also done some painting on it and sorry about the crinkling because they do wrap it all up okay so let's start with these two I've got out my watercolors which are my PBO watercolors haven't used these for a while these are probably my most expensive watercolor set and semi-professional the other ones I've got are just these kids ones. This was a Mikador one that I got at Spotlight really cheap. I've also got, because some of them take better to paper and stuff. Um, certainly this one flows a lot more and you get the real watercolory like pooling and stuff. These two here are quite chalky. This one's a Semco one. I think I stole it off Alexis. Don't tell her. Um, and they're more like the, the cakes. Um, and this one's quite chalky as well. This one I got um, fairly reasonable at Spotlight. But I do like the colours. I do like these palettes, so I'll be keeping these. One day I do want some really expensive Daniel Smith watercolours, but at the moment I'm just fooling around and can't really justify that. So I'm just going to use a water brush. I've got a pot of water up here just off camera. It's a water brush, but I'm just using it as a paintbrush. This is one of my most favourite tips. Excuse this disgusting barrel when the water gets dirty it goes up the barrel and stains it but it works just as well and I should have grabbed a spray bottle of water I'm trying to look on my desk for a spray bottle spray bottle of water because what I like to do is spray my palette before I use it so just a bottle with water in it so just give me a bit of a spray I might even give the stickers a bit of a spray We'll see. 
I don't want too much water because these are stickers, they're not going to take a lot of water. Um, let's go with some yellow. But spray. Now my sheets are going to curl. But spraying the stickers first and spraying water into here um, means your paints flow a bit easier. So we'll just get the paint flowing. So I'm just going to do some in different colours. And I may mix some colours. We'll see in a minute how adventurous I get. So mainly the reason for these stickers is I want to have some ready-made ones to either send out in Happy Mail or Racks. I hope you that a bit, bit more this year. I um, haven't done any swaps. I've just signed up for a swap with an um, overseas swap. Um, a smallish one that won't cost me too much in postage, which should be good. So I'm aiming this year to do a few more Racks. Racks, if you've not heard of it, are RAK okay, and it's basically a random act of kindness. And you basically just put a little parcel of goodies together and send them off. So I tend to not have a lot of sort of pre-made tags or pre-made stickers like this. I tend to do uh, just make some when I need some. So I thought, why not? Let's just get that out of the way. I'll do the circles in a minute. Bring this in here. I thought, why not have some fun, do some stamping on them, and see if I can have some on hand to put in happy mail, put on envelopes, use in my art. Excuse my head. Whoops. Now I have to do that on orange. Excuse my head if it just got in the way. So these are drying fairly quickly. So probably watercolours on a 40 degree heat day is probably not a good idea. But they will dry really quickly, which is really cool. So just wanting a base coat. I have experimented a bit. And I found if you're going to do this with stamping, and I'm just going to use an archival stamp pad, is to put your watercolour down first. Because you can certainly put your watercolour over archival, but I find it fades out and... fades out the colour of the watercolour. Of the ink, sorry, the black ink. If that's the look you're going for, that's really good. But I like my ink to stand out really well. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to stamp each of these stickers individually or do all over stamping. Probably with the people I'm going to try to do them individually. But you can certainly do this with any background stamp and have the stamp overlaying two stickers. I may pull some of the background stamps out and do that. We'll see how we go. So just being very liberal with the water, but not too much. Doesn't matter if that comes into there. I made a purple one. What are we going to do on this one? I like nice bright colours. These ones actually don't have what I call the waste between the stickers, which is a bit of a shame because I like to peel it off and use it as well. But the other ones do, the ones you put through your computer. Okay, so that we might put aside to dry while we work on some others. It's actually interesting that I'm getting, you can see that line down there? I don't know what that's from. It's not from the paint, it's through the sticker. Let me have a look at the pack. I don't know if you can put that allowed to a bit of texture. So that's the first sheet. So as you can tell they don't take long to do whoops long to do. So just doing them all different colours and that'll be dry in a few minutes. We'll put that aside. Let's bring in the round ones and we'll give these a squirt. Give our palette a bit more of a squirt. It's hot. Hot 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 today. Oh, this watercolour is going on these ones fairly well. These had a bit more of a shiny surface, so we'll see how they end up drying. Oops. 
Again, these ones don't have the waste between them, which would have been nice. Because that would have made cool embellishments as well. Let's do a couple in the colour. We've got our brush and we have three different tone colours. Sorry if I keep pausing. I sort of I don't do a lot of this style of video, so I run out of things to talk about. It is the middle of January here in Australia and it is hot. So we've probably got I think 12 days or 11 days before we go back to school so school's getting closer this month has actually flown by January has just it just feels like yesterday it was Christmas so this school holidays has flown by so ne uh, this year I'm getting used to saying next year this year Miss Alexis is in grade 5 so in Australia we have um, we have kindergarten for four-year-olds and that's usually at a different school and it's just like a kindergarten school and they go two days a week usually two full days a week or they might go some half days depending on what kinder you go to um, Alexis did that and did two full days it was kinder slash childcare um, and then you go into prep when you're five five or six and so she's done prep when she was five she's done grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four she's in grade five this year I can't believe my baby is in grade five Seriously, like Nick, this year we're starting to think about high school. Um, basically, by probably May next year, we have to decide what high school she's going to. So that's just scary. I don't have a high school kid. I have a little baby. So yes, back to it. Um, Australia schools. We go from the schools go from prep to grade six. So that's seven years of what we call primary school. And then when the kids finish grade six, we go to what we call high school. And most of the high schools run from year seven to year 10 in my town. Um, and then you're not finished yet. So you do four years of high school and then you do what we call the last two years, which is year 11 and 12. And in my particular town, you usually go to the one school um, unless the school that you do year seven to 10 at does year 11 and year 12. Year 11 and year 12 is really the hard years you, you get, you, um, you getting ready for university, you choose your own subjects and you have to work really hard to get a good score to get to university, which you guys call college, but we call university. So, yes. And also high schools are expensive. I was looking at some of the um, bollocks. I wanted blue, not purple. Um looking at some of the the high schools and oh my god at the moment we pay or well the school Lexus goes to you pay fees in primary school oh I still stuck it in the wrong color which one's purple this one ah that one's I'm looking for so in primary school we pay fees for the year and the school provides everything they provide well the particular school I'm at with the Lexus um, they provide all the books all the pencils all the things and you really don't have to pay out for anything else unless it's optional stuff that also includes a school camp and all that sort of in in the one quoted fee high school's a lot different you um you are given a book list and you have to go and buy the books for your child and then the textbooks and then usually Alexis will probably have to have a computer so high school is a lot more expensive that's looking really cool they are going to look really cool with faces on them so this one is nearly touch dry now. We might do a third one and then I'll come back and start doing some stamping. I don't really want to take 40 minutes of colouring with bits of paper for you. It was so funny when I went to primary school. I'll give away my age. Um, when I went to primary school, we had one computer in the whole school in the grade 6 um, classroom, the grade five, six classroom. This would be called drop paper, what I'm cleaning my brush off on. So we had one computer in the whole school. We only had about 150 kids, but that was sort of the norm back then. This is going back probably 30, 30 something years ago. I'm just trying to work out. I'm going to put that there. Let's do the small ones because they'll be really cool. Because I've done some of these bigger ones before, so if I don't get to those, I'm not overly phased so these ones I think I'll just do blotch it like blobs 
So getting back to it, when I was at primary school, we had one computer in the grade five, six classroom and we were rostered on it about two hours once, I'd say possibly once a month we would come up um, to have like our turn or our play on the computer um, or our time on the computer. Now Alexis's primary school has Chromebooks and they're basically like laptops and they have class sets of them. So everyone in the class gets time on the Chromebook when they go and do things on the Chromebook. The teachers can send them work or set up files for them and they go and do um, files, they go and do their work on the computer, they can email each other within the classroom if they know other people's emails in the school they can email other people, it's really cool. So school's certainly changed a lot. So Alexis is really excited when she gets to high school because I was in the, uh, one of the stationery stores January is our big back to school and you guys get in summer in America as well where all the stores bring out all the nice yummy, it's looking really cool, the nice yummy school supplies and a lot of them you don't need. <laughs> um, and we're in the store buying, so I was getting something, oh we're getting in a new school bag. And I said well in a couple of years in high school we'll have to bring a list in and buy all your books, like buy the binder books and the binders and the pencils and the and they give you a list of how many pens, and I'm sure it's the same in America, because I've seen a few haul videos like that. Um, and she goes, oh, I can't wait for that. I said, why, Alexis? She goes, so I can spend your money. It's like, yeah, mum's got to have the money before we spend it. So we'll get off the topic of school. They're a bit um, streaky, but I'm not sure whether they will dry streaky. These are a bit streaky too, but... I may try some of these with um, acrylic paints as well, but not today. So these ones are almost touch dry, so I'll put those aside. That particular one, the circle ones, I might just do, these are the small ones, I might do just overall stamping. I love purple, so I'll do some purple ones here. So this is quite fun when you want to play, but you just don't know what you want to do. You can just sit down and, what happens if I squirt these a little? be nice to get some pooling of the, like you know how watercolours pool and do like funky things when they mix colours? Nice if I get some of that happening, but I don't know whether these colours will do it, or whether I'm not using enough water, or whether the paper, I don't know. I've never had any training in watercolours. Uh, that and that is going to spell disaster if I put purple near that. Didn't do any watercolours at school and university, mainly we did um, oils. I remember doing oils in university, which I didn't like. Um, and I don't think we ever did watercolours, we did oils and acrylics, I think. I only went to university for six months with art, because, yeah, our government was being a pain. And trying to work and go to university, and yeah, it was just, I decided to leave. I loved the course, but the politics behind it was just annoying. But I think I've discussed that before. What else do people discuss in these videos? Not much to say about me slopping on some paint to like a blue. This is also a good way to use up if you're like me, and I don't know whether you can see the palette. Can you see the palette? You can just. Um, oh, there goes the other sheet of stickers because the air conditioning's on, blowing things. I deliberately didn't put the fan on today because we would have had paper flying everywhere. Um, this is a good way to use up colours if you've got a palette like this and a palette or your collection of colours and as you can tell I'm using more colours and some of my favourite colours and that's Okay, so you can see I'm using, sorry I got sidetracked. See this is why I shouldn't do live videos. Um, or I should say real time videos. I might play this back and if it's absolute rubbish and I'm just sitting here wafting, you probably won't see it. I'll probably speed it up and voice over it. <laughs> no, I'll probably put this one up on it. Um, so back to what I was saying, I get sidetracked easily. Um, so this is a good way to use up colours that you 
will be left in your palette. Um, obviously, I like pinks and purples and like the the red and the yellow. I haven't used a lot of the neutral colours. Um, get some of this blue out. So I sort of prefer, and you notice that with all my palettes, with all my whether they're cheap. Um, when they're cheap watercolours, when they're expensive watercolours, I tend to get drawn to different colours. Or the same colours, sorry. That's a bit cool in there. So not much technique to this, I'm just sort of scratching it back and forth with a bit of water, just to, just to lay down some colour. Um, these stickers are sort of this big. So you're not going to see a lot of them. I can always cut them smaller. Again, with this one, I might do some overall stamping, but that doesn't really work with the faces. So we'll see what happens. That more works with background stamps. So I'll just finish off this sheet, and then I'm looking at the first sheet, and the first sheet is really dry, so we might go and do some stamping on that, because that's the fun bit. This is like the boring bit. You certainly don't need to do these on stickers. You could certainly just do them on either thin watercolour paper or um, I don't particularly like over here. Um, or even photocopy paper or some sort of paper. Here we'll put some. I know these two colours shouldn't be seen together. They're the op opplement complementary, no opposites. Yeah, blue and orange are opposite on the colour wheel or something or other. Um, <laughs> it's been too long since I've been to school. I was going to say, yeah, you can certainly, you don't have to do them on stickers, but I just find the stickers are easy and nice and handy when you want to stick something down. Certainly if I'm working with the stickers in my art journal, I will usually mod podge under them or put a bit of glue under them just to make sure they stick because some of these stickers are a little old from office works and things and they do get discounted and sometimes this sticky does wear a bit off. Okay, I'm going to leave that now before I turn it into a dog's breakfast. So as you can see, we're just slapping down colour. We're not doing anything fancy. Let's bring this sheet back in. And I am going to get... I don't know whether you've got to see... Oh, where are you? Over there. See some of this pooling and this sort of... where the water sort of dries and it's... Um, like the collections of water. I'm trying to work out what I meant. Okay, these ones are looking cool. I do like this squishy even though they're not solid. I wanted them solid or buy solid stickers. Okay, now the fun begins. Let's get rid of this bit. I've got my trusty stamping block. Yeah, I couldn't find my proper one. It's one of my gel plate ones. Um, that I stick my gel plate on. It's bit, just basically a bit of clear acrylic. Now I may have to cut these into strips. Let's see what fits. Actually, the girls might fit. I thought I'd discount this girl, but she might actually fit. So she's a possibility. They're too big. The other one that might fit is this girl. But again, she might not fit as well. Whoops. This girl I'm talking about. She's like an old-fashioned 50s housewife. Oh, she'll fit, so we'll do some of her. As you can tell, I'm not real good at cleaning my stamps, which is probably very, very bad. So let's go with and open these ones. So these ones are just cheap ones from that place we shall not mention. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just send me a message and I'll let you know. So they're very, very affordable stamps. So this is the, the little girl. So what I might do is do some of these first. And I think I'm going to have to... Let's get this water palette out of the way. Let's find my archival ink, which was on my desk before I threw oh, everything else on it. Oh, seriously. Okay, my desk eats things. It does. Things just get misplaced. I might have to pause you and come back when I found my ink pad. I'm sure I just had it on my desk. I was just using it last night. Silly, I put my phone on it. Silly Billy. Silly Billy. Okay, so just using a really beat up 
that needs a reinker, and I've got to find the reinker for Archival Link by, I think this is by Ranger. So it does need inking. You're probably wanting a permanent ink because if you're going to put mixed media over the top of it, you're wanting the ink not to run. So the advantage of the clear stamps is you can see where you're um, lining them up. Oh wow, that looks really cool. Okay, and the feet are off onto the scratch paper or the drop paper, but that's cool. That'll just make a nice pattern. So we'll do this one again. So I might drop it down a bit this time. I am pressing quite hard. You probably usually don't have to press quite hard. Um, I am working on a trestle table, and the trestle table is one that folds up, so it's got a bit of a bow in it, um, or a bit of a dent in the middle, so it makes um, it makes stamping and trying to get things straight fun. I would use my, I've got a Tim Holtz stamp, stamp, stamp tool, stamp, what is it called? It's the thing that you can put paper into line stamps up with. Just says I got a Tonic Studio Tim Holtz stamping press. I do have one of these. The only thing is I can't use it on this desk at the moment because I can't get a clear impression. It's easier to do it this way for these, and we're getting a fairly good result. They are looking quite cute. This year I am wanting to upgrade my table that I craft on. As I said at the moment, it's a trestle, and I did have one that didn't fold up. But unfortunately, that had to be then used as my TV table. <laughs> as I said, I'm in a temporary house. Uh, and it's really small. Um, so we did a bit of a swap round the other day. Alexis and I got a sewing machine for Christmas. So we needed to not sew on the trestle table anymore because it moves so much and the machine bounces around. So we had a small desk I actually got from Alexis' school years ago when they upgraded furniture and it's a solid desk but it's only very small. So we had the TV on that, we took the TV off that, we put the TV on the trestle that didn't have the bow in it and the one that didn't fold up and now I'm on the fold up trestle. <sighs> so we did a bit of a change, I say change school's a holiday, I'm looking for some scissors and I don't have much room on this desk to have anything. Hello, I had scissors before. There's a pair. Because if I go and stamp that next row, I'm going to interfere with this row. So we're just going to cut them into strips. So yes, by the end of the year this year, I would like to get a proper hard desk. Like hard top desk. So I'm thinking like two sets of drawers either side and then like a tabletop or a door. Like that sort of concept. Aren't they cute? And they'll be very cute to use. Now, let's finish with this one. And let's do something else. Let's put her back in the package. Where's that other stamp here I had? Again, this one will have to go down this way so I can stamp the bottom of the stamp off. Haven't used this stamp before. Ooh, she's pretty. She probably needs to go on a bigger. She probably needs to go. Oh, we're not going to lose much of the detail, we'll see. Yes, so by the end of the year I want a proper scrapbook table that I can stamp on and do all sorts of fun stuff on. Oh no, she looks really cute on that size stamp. I thought she'd have to go on the bigger one. So I thought these would be cute in my art journal, in my, one of my few art journals I have. Not sure what order the videos will go up in, but um, I did a video the other day on my ever expansing pile of art journals. And I have about 10, did I say that? 10 open, well, no, technically one is finished. Um, open art journals on the go at the moment because I send to, tend to see a style of art journal on the internet and then go, wow, that would be really cool to uh, work in. And then decide that I want to work in that and make one or do one. Especially last year I got into um, junk journaling and made a few junk journals which was really cool. 
So I'm trying to press down this but not wobble it so I don't get a, a fuzzy impression. I'm not the best stamper. I'm stamping and I have issues. But these are going pretty well. Oh, aren't they cute? Aren't they? Oops, sorry. Forgetting where I am. There I am. Oh, aren't they pretty? Okay, we'll cut this slice off. What are we going to do on these next ones? Let's go and have a look. They are just... Oh, kiss me out of it. Ink pad. They are just the cutest little stickers. And they look like bought stickers. Seriously, they could look like stickers that someone has bought in a shop. And you can do your own. Oh, I wonder if the circles are dry yet. Oh, still got... Oh, I love the pooling on these stickers. I've got that on a bit. Okay, a few wet spots. So we'll put those back. The little ones are dry, but let's see. BFF. Mm. Lips. Mm. Love. Mm. <laughs> now I'm being indecisive. I should not have got so many stamp sets out. So I'm looking for another stamp that will look sort of good on this style. A dream saw. Dream a little dream. That's too big. Oh, they're either too big or too small. Seriously. Just say, and that's not going to fit either. Seriously. Okay, what do we got over here? Do, 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 do. Crayons won't fit. The hand won't fit. What about the shooting star? That would certainly fit. I don't know really what shooting star is though. I don't know whether I want. I don't know who I get like this when I craft. I'm dreadful. Very into. I reckon that. Let's try the. I think it's supposed to be a cloud. I'm going to get a whole junk of a mess here to clean up soon. Let's just stamp this out on the paper. Oh wow, I like that. Let's do some cloud ones. Why? I have no idea. Because I can. I got very inspired last night. It was very hot here. And I went and decided to watch YouTube channels when I was in bed on my phone, as you do. And I come across Diane Reevely. She's delusions, isn't she? Delusions. Oh my god, I want all the new 2018 releases. But I really can't justify buying them. I love her new stamps. Um, her. What else did I like out of hers? Her dialogue her she's brought her own basically her own traveler's notebook out um I called it a dialogue and it was just awesome and i'm wanting to do something like that um coming up this year i have a lot of downtime um with alexis waiting on her to finish appointments or waiting on her to finish school activity not school activities well probably school activities as well um I like this so much, I'm going to do a second line. Or she goes to a after school activity and I have an hour, an hour and a half to do something with. And I've sort of been wandering around the shops. Um, I started last year, actually, backtrack. I started when she started her art classes after school. She goes to one of our art shops and does some art classes. Um, I started with my study and then I finished my study last year. I got my diploma of art therapy, which I'm hoping to use um, in the next couple of years. And that was great. And then when that ran out, it's like, oh, what do I do for an hour and a half? Um, and this year she's doing two after school activities, so I have two lots of space. And I'm finding if I'm going wandering into shops, <laughs> I tend to go buy stuff, which I'm trying not to do this year. I'm trying to use the damn stuff I've got. So I want to put together a small, and I love Diane Reefley's idea of it, and Traveller's Notebook I've sort of toyed with in the past. I want to put together a Traveller's Notebook in her sort of style because she has I think there's eight different books a plug for Diane Ridley she had eight different books and she had like a black one she had one with backgrounds in it and so it's like mini art journals I didn't get the whole traveler's notebook sort of drawing your day and sort of mini scrapple pages in it. it it didn't nothing really grabbed me and go oh, I need to do this but her video was like you need to do this 
So I love her concept, but I'm going to see if I can DIY me something. Um, and I love the idea of something small and a little art bag that I can take with me, go find a cafe or get a coffee or go sit in the park if the weather is going to be nice. Oh, aren't those cute? I love the clouds. Oh, I'm liking the clouds. Don't know what it is with the clouds. I can see myself doodling in those clouds, different designs. Um, let's do something over here. Ooh, I just noticed what I could do over there. That would look really cool. Um, so I liked her concept because it's like a mini art journal in the Traveller's Notebook style. And she'd set up pages of stamped images she could then colour. She set up blank pages she could then just stick stuff in. She set up... Um, with her stencils she just drew around them and then doodled in them which colouring in doesn't do it for me I don't know I'm not a colourer I never was um I would get colouring books for when I was younger and I would not use them I would actually um I'm gonna use this wood grain stamp I would grab blank paper and redraw the cartoon images and I can do that really well um I've been great at cartoon drawing I should have should have did that in my um, that's my career but I sort of yeah back to it she's back to what I want to set up it's like a traveler's notebook like a mini art journal that I can like have a sheet of stickers like this in it I can sit there and doodle on them or I can stamp out the clouds and I can go back and doodle on them so mm, or I can stamp out like circles and then I can go back and like this frame is really basic and boring but if I stamped them all over the page on decent paper I could then sit there while I'm waiting for Alexis to finish her activities or sitting at school waiting for her to finish her activities don't you wait around a lot on your parents um, I could sit there and I've got something to occupy me with and it's not big but then it's not it's not the Traveller's Notebook style I've seen so far. It's more of a style that would work for me. Let's stamp these and see what we get. So I was very inspired last night. So I want to make some sort of Traveller's Notebook with some sort of inserts to occupy me when I have to wait around for Alexis. That is looking really cool. Look at that. I know it's stamped in the background, I was going to try to wipe it off, but you can see the little stickers. Aren't they cool? Ooh, let's do some more of this. So I was very inspired by her. Um, I love her products, I don't own a lot of them because they are on the pricey side. I've got a few of her paints.